John, we've had a few weeks off, a chance to reflect, have a, have a bit of a breather. Just summarise 2022 from a, an academy and pathway point of view. Oh, it's a really hectic summer. I, uh, you, you know, this year weather was fabulous, so we hardly had a game off. I Meant we got a load of cricket in, but you would count this year as being really su- successful across the piece. Teams played well and performed. Individuals played well and progressed. You know, the, the, whatever you, you, how high you measure the success, and you'd say it was a really good success. And let's go back to the start of the summer, April, May. The academy still take part in the NEPL and the NYSD T20s. How valuable are, are them competitions still? And what do the guys get out of playing in them competitions? It's a really important part of the season. You know, uh, historically we played in the North East Premier League and lads playing against the best recreational players. Um, it's a really important part and something I think maintaining that in the 2020 environment it keeps our uh, our feet on the ground and keeps you rooted in uh, in the local cricket. Um, so yeah, really important part of the season. Did okay in the 2020, got thrashed against Burmua, um and Chester Street, miles too strong for the young lads, but a really good learning experience, you know, good good in some ways. Um, played pretty well in the NYSD competition and came up against a really strong Darlington side, got knocked out in the quarter final. Um, but yeah, super start to season and the opportunity to play a lot of 2020 cricket at a high standard at that stage of the season sets the sets the uh, the rest of the summer up, and especially for white ball stuff. You talked about setting it up for the for the ECB competitions, obviously the under 18s T20 competition and the the free day sort of stuff. How pleased are you with what you saw in that in that competition throughout the summer? Yeah, yeah, we did pretty well in the competition. Um, it, again, that's a challenge because if you get your first team out you're a really good side and you're looking forward if as happened lads are playing away in the second team playing bringing under 19s playing for the first team you don't get your best team out and that presents opportunity to the younger ones but then you're not quite as successful and as competitive as a team and that's ultimately what happened um, I was really uh, you know confident with the group that we had to compete and maybe win some trophies in that but that's not the case you know it's, that to move on and and, uh, and what happened is we've we played pretty well mid, finished mid table in most of the competitions um having won some lost some um drawn some what do you, what do you what are your aims of if that three day competition really when you when you start the season what do you what do you expect from the lads well yeah it's it's when you get it's dependent on the group that you've got available to play um obviously we try and win every match uh this year's three day competition in particular presented a lot of different types of three day match you know one, we were in charge and big score on the board, trying to ball the opposition out. The other side of things, we were trying to defend uh, and ultimately couldn't against Derbyshire uh, on a belt and pitch at Brandon. Um, and everything in between, really. So it's just, to, well, we try and win, but it also provides experience for those players and gives them, hopefully, food for thought about different ways matches might unfold and how they might apply their skills in any situation. And that 270 from Ross Whitfield again gives Lancashire the, the highest junior pathway score in Durham's Durham's history. Just talk us through that moment, a special moment for him, but also a proud moment for the club. Yeah, I've seen. I mean, it's a fantastic innings. You pinch yourself watching it. He goes off like went in trying to take the game on, and took the game on, and just I'm thinking he must have hit five or six sixes. It was just it was class batting. Um, really like a proud moment for him. You know, he had a tough time last year. Didn't score the runs that possibly he'd hoped for this worked really hard over the winter and people don't see the behind the scenes stuff and the hard work that he puts in so then when he gets the success and the hunger that the possible setback and and uh, perceived not quite doing as well as he'd hoped the previous season that hunger drives him to to a fabulous score it was class to watch and ross is one of the players that have progressed through the through the pathway just a little bit about the, the junior pathway teams this summer the the, the boys teams um, success at, at Taunton for the, for the for the first time. Just evaluate the, the junior boys pathway teams from a whole this summer. Yeah, they uh, uh, across the piece they played really well. They, you know, like strong sides starting to look to compete regularly with the much bigger counties, Yorkshire and Lancashire. So uh, the unsung heroes, un, uh, lower down in the pathway, the coaches that work day in day out with those lads. I think we're starting to see the fruits of all of that labour and. Uh, yeah, four teams of fabulous winning Taunton. I think there's a bit of chat that we might have won that tournament in a different guise a few years ago, but 
from the tournament organisers, they say that's the first time that we've won that um, feather in that team's cap and a, a really impressive year group going forward. You know, you'd expect some, some decent performances out of them the next couple of years. So, yeah, uh, 13s did well at uh, Barney Castle, under 12s did okay at uh, rugby tournament. So, all of, the, all of the signs are good going forward for the junior pathway. And for the academy graduates, made the England under 19 uh, debuts this year for, for England. Again, fantastic achievement for the club to have four players involved with that. Ben McKinney, captain on the side as well. Great achievement. Just how proud are you of, of them guys making the England 19s debuts and, and excelling on the big stage? Yeah, it's great for them. You know, it's like f fabulous, absolutely proud to, proudest punch that they've got into that international side. Probably not since the academy first started in 97. 98 have had that number of players at national honours um, so yeah like credit to the region credit to the club super to have that volume of talent coming through at the bottom end really and Ben is, ben is captain what an, what an achievement that is for him oh, it's mint. yeah he's a natural captain natural leader um, you know people look to him on the pitch uh, I would say he's a really smart cricket brain really good tactician so you know, no brainer that in that environment they've looked to him and he's 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 running the show and taking the t taking the lead. I think he's got good long term captaincy credentials and yeah, class that he's he's doing it all. Success for us as well. He was a leading run scorer across the across the series. How how special is that for him to, oh. to have a good summer? Yeah, great for us. Great for us. A breakthrough season for him really. You know, like got into the second team, performed well at the second team, did well for the juniors. Uh, for the academy, and then to play that role, to be that confident in that England environment, and still play the, in the style that he's played is fabulous. And how different is it for the lads when they've, they've been involved with Durham and they go to these England tournaments, and it's a stepping outside of the comfort zone with new coaches, new, new players. Kind of, how 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 do they how do they react to that when they come, when they come back to Durham? Yeah, ah, uh, well, uh, this year you can't really tell because it was right at the end of the summer when they played for England. But uh, uh, you'd hope that they're set up pretty well for putting on the three lines and the pressure and the expectation that that brings. Um, I think they take it in their stride and quite excited to come back into the environment and, and tell everyone what it was like. And you continue to produce the goods again this summer, five five players, academy graduates making the, the first team debuts, de uh, debuts. How proud is that for me as academy director to see these lads making the debuts on the, on the first class stage? Yeah, super, super to see fellas moving forward. Um, Tom, Bushy, you know, they all they all work really hard at their game. Um, so seeing them progress and, and, and get to the levels that you think that they're capable of and then deliver, that's that's absolutely superb. I touched on the England under 19s. We also had recognition at the younger age groups at the Bunbury Festival, ECB Super 4s. How good is it when these younger lads are also get these opportunities to, to impress at the ECB uh, national, national competitions? Yeah, well, going to those national competitions, Benchmarking, really, you know, you you think you've got good players, and you've got a bit of a sense that they might be okay, but you're never quite sure until they get into that regional environment and start mixing it with the best in the country. So this year, were, yeah, the the lads that got into that, they did pretty well. You know, they were they deserve to be there, and then they were performed well in the tournaments. So yeah, it's credit to credit to all of the work that's gone on down the pathway, really. And you're involved with, with Super Fours as a as a coach. How do you benefit from that from that experience? You've done it for a number of years now, but how good is it from you as a as a as academy director? Yeah, just, like you say, really, it's good to get out of your comfort zone. Good to go out of the area that you know you you're confident in. Um, again, benchmarking, you just sense check what what you think you're seeing against the best in the country, both from what you're doing yourself and for what you're seeing, and ultimately how the players are performing. And here we are in November now. What what's the plan now for the next next few months leading up to, to Christmas and then and then beyond into the summer? Well, we're just getting going with the programs the last couple of weeks. So uh, the next next couple of months will be a lot hard work in the gym. Um, again, the, the the support staff behind the scenes work blooming hard tirelessly this time of year. You know, you think feet up, but lads are working really hard non-stop in the gym. The junior teams have just started their, their winter sort of skills development practice, the spin, pace, bowling, wicket keeping programmes are all up and running. Um, so yeah, the next few months will be a lot of hard work on pretty basic stuff really, just get the basics right and, 
hopefully that bears fruit next summer.